when we sneeze, sometimes those droplets of snot are filled with viruses. What are they? Are they alive? Are they just fragments of genetic material with protein around them? Nobody knows. We're not sure what viruses are. They are parasites. We know that. Oh, my gosh. All right, onwards. That's... They look like spaceships sometimes, and some scientists think they came from outer space. We're not sure. But we know they're obligate parasites, and we have to study them sometimes by culturing them on living tissue, so like a blood auger. Viruses can crystallize and still somehow be alive, although are they alive? We don't know. They're not even made of cells, which all living things are made of cells, so we're just not sure what viruses really are. We know how they're built, um, and we know they have RNA often or DNA, but they have very poor uh, repair of their uh, DNA. So you and I, when we sleep at night, our DNA is quietly being uh, repaired. But viruses, they don't care. They mutate like crazy. And that makes it hard for our immune system to detect and destroy them because they're always changing. Well, they have a core. We know that of nucleic acids, which basically is either RNA or DNA, the genome. And this fragile genome is surrounded by a protein capsid that gives it shape. And here's some example capsids. We have the helix type uh, example would be rabies. Polyhedron, which examples herpes. These are not happy viruses. Capsid that is complex. We find those in phage viruses. They are good at stealing other people's DNA. We call that resorted. Whatever they infect, sometimes they'll grab some in these jackpot events. And that's why there's a nearly endless number of flu viruses out there. Every year we have to have a different vaccine because of different flu viruses. They just keep stealing other people's DNA. Example H1N1 and really H1N2 as well. They have been slowly evolving. We know at least 1987 we tracked some DNA from a pig in Indiana. But we've also got some bird flu, which is we call it avian for bird, and some human flu as well. So this thing is stealing all sorts of DNA and always changing, evolving, and making it very hard to treat. Reproductive pathways. They survive by having a host, obligate. The, the pathway I like, if I'm going to get a virus, I like the lytic because it's short-term. It may be acute, painful, like a cold or a flu, but you'll see it's not so terrible in some ways. It's going to attach at a receptor site in the attachment or initial infection where it binds. And, and that's why some medicines that block viral attachments are working. There's some work with HIV being done. All right, once it attaches, it's going to insert or inject really its DNA or RNA, genetic material, in which case you'll see it replicates. It, it basically tricks our body into making more viruses. So when you have that chicken sandwich for lunch, some of that chicken sandwich goes into making viruses. <laughs> kind of crazy. All right, and then once we have the outbreak, this is when we sneeze or here's so here's a nice review here. Once we sneeze or or somehow our mucus gets out there, now those viruses can attack other cells. Now I like the lytic I mentioned because we can uh, basically destroy it. It's self-limiting. All those little particles on the right, oh, those shows you how small viruses are. They're going to attach. Here's that attachment or initial infection. It has to be done at a receptor site, and it found one. And now it's preparing for infection. Oh, there it goes. And soon we're going to have the replication. So now it's into the cytoplasm of our cells where it's going to replicate. Yes, not a good thing. Oh, this is the creepy part. Now, it's going to use our chicken sandwich to make more viruses. Okay. The lysogenic is much more evil, I think, because 
This is going to produce these chronic or lifelong infections. These are often the retroviruses. They have a re reverse transcriptase. A bunch of big words, but it means that their enzyme can convert them to uh, DNA. And you might think, well, who cares? But uh, well, you'll see. Hang on. They're going to be able to attach. See, we have DNA. If they have RNA, well, that's not a good match because we have two strands. They have one. So they will double their strands, and that's what HIV, herpes, hepatitis B. Hey, have you had your vaccine? Uh, I recommend it. Lysogenic. Okay, here we go. Initial infection or attachment. The viron, which when it's outside of a toast, we call it a viron, it's going to inject its plasmid. That's just a piece of its DNA into our nucleus. Now, here's the difference between lytic and lysogenic. In lysogenic, we now have a provirus, and that means the genetic material becomes a permanent part of our DNA. Now we have the window phase of replication. Let's say some guy, some sleazy guy, sleeps with a prostitute, and he wakes up and gets tested. Oh man, I got lucky, no HIV. Well, that's not always true because this window phase can go on for several weeks or even months. Quietly, each one of his cells is going through mitosis and replicating. So soon he has millions of copies of that provirus. Not a good thing. Well, fine, at some point he gets depressed, he gets a cold. Some kind of factor triggers the lytic cycle. That little piece of provirus wakes up and says, hey, time to get busy, make lots of viruses. And then we have the outbreak. Enzymes released, viruses are out, and now the person's going to test positive uh, and is also really quite contagious. So this is a dangerous period when they're oozing millions of these uh, viruses, sometimes in their mucus and their body secretion. So, man, be careful when you're out there dating. Oh, genital herpes caused by HSV2. But um, here, let's see. Yeah, um, I'm trying to look, remember what we have here. Oh, okay, I want to skip ahead because you'll see the list lysogenic. Nice little review of lysogenic. Here it is. Lysogenic retrovirus. There it is. And while that guy is trying to figure him out, uh, you know, the problem with HSV2 sometimes, uh, it may also infect the lips and the mouth. So that makes oral sex uh, potentially highly risky. Um, and it's kind of unnecessary, really, if you love someone uh, and you don't know them well. Okay, get my message. Uh, there's no cure in window phase 2 to 20 days before the outbreaks, and we get some ulcers. Oh, look at this guy. This is what the lysogenic retrovirus is going to do. It's going to send its proviruses. There they are. And this is the evil thing about them. They're not just happy to make us sick for a month, but they want to make us sick for our whole lives. And the way they do this is they're going to penetrate the nucleus and go and attach to our DNA. They become us. You can't separate us from the virus anymore. And that's why we can't treat it. How do you treat something that's us? All right, well, I got a little excited there. Let's calm down here. Genital warts. I didn't want to show you the real thing, so I showed you a wart on the foot. They create their own uh, blood vessels. Uh, HPV. When my daughter turned 12, I had her get the HPV vaccine. Now, she's a good kid. I totally trust her. But this is a creepy virus that um, can lead to cervical cancer. And it's one that's preventable. Lysogenic, I've been talking about here, they can cause a, kind of a carcinogenic genetic function that induces tumors. And I talked about the reverse transcriptase. That's when they can alter our DNA by attaching to it. And so we're no longer ourselves. Now we're part virus. They can stimulate what's called pre-oncogenes. And we have genes in our body that are kind of precancerous. And all it takes is some kind of trigger, like smoking. Some person, they'll have like five cigarettes and they've triggered their oncogene. And then some person else will maybe have a thousand cigarettes, but they don't have the right oncogene. And so sometimes we don't know what oncogenes we inherited. So let's not mess around. Uh, in the liver, we have the hepatitis B. And that's why uh, that's a great vaccine to get. I, I got mine. Okay, on a herpes, I mentioned cervical cancer. Review here. Oh, this is just a wild group, man. We don't know if they're alive. We do know that they're uh, parasites, 
and they can be virons, they can crystallize. They have this capsid that gives them shape. They do this jackpot thing where they steal uh, uh, genetic material from their host, which is H1N1 and H1N2. So we have that avian pig uh, human flu. Lytic, the one that, if you're going to get a virus, I guess this is a, a better one if you want to see it that way, because it's, it's going to be acute and it's self limiting. You're going to recover. It has those stages of, of attachment, replication, outbreak. But it's much nicer in a way than the lysogenic. This is the bad one. Okay, <laughs> this is the one that's going to send that provirus and attach to your own DNA onto genetic herpes and cancer. Wow. Guys, be careful out there. All right. Thanks for listening.